Amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everyone. Um, give a few um, more seconds for more people to come in um, on the line. Give us a few seconds. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless. Please give a hand wave or something on the um, comment section. So uh, there you go, Sister Fields. Amen. Good, good afternoon. Good afternoon. What an awesome um, Sunday school review that was today. Um, I really liked the little breakout session um, that we had where we could fellowship in the word with one another. That was awesome. Reverend Owens, so praise God for that. And for those that were on um, Sunday School Review, Sister Fields, Evangelist mm -hmm. Wright, um, Deacon Reggie, Deacon Boone, Deacon Marcus, I mean, Deacon James, um, uh, Sister Baker, God and Sister Scott, God bless each of y'all for being with us. Amen, amen. I see you coming in, all right? God bless you. Um, Sister Coleman, how are you on today? Um, uh, Brother Deacon Coleman, amen, amen. Amen. Sister Milton, Sister Tate, Reverend Harris, he was on Sunday School Review as well. Can we go into a word of prayer? Oh, gracious God, we come before you today with all the honor and all the glory, God. We just give you praise for who you are. And we thank you, Lord God, for your love, your peace, your grace, and your mercy. Father, another opportunity where we can come and fellowship with you and uh, and break into your word. Lord, we ask that your word be hid in our hearts tonight that we may not sin against thee, God. God, but we don't just hold on to this word. We take it out to a dying world. We thank you, Lord, for our pastor and for uh, his love and his commitment um, to you and to the church, Lord, and for giving each of us opportunity to grow in your word, Father God. We pray, Father God, that you would give us revelation and knowledge on tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Minister Harris, Deacon um, Wright, Sister uh, Minister um, Brown. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, everyone. Um, I hope y'all got your pens and y'all. Uh, uh, pens, pencils, and papers, and Bibles together. Um, um, I pray that this would be an action lesson again on um, on tonight. Um, uh, on tonight, we want to talk about uh, a victorious life or living living um, with victory. You know, um, so in our lesson tonight, we will find that the only way that we can have victory or be victorious in this walk is through Jesus Christ. And our, our main scripture, our theme scripture, if you can write it down, would be 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. And when you have it, type amen or give me thumbs up or something so that I know that you, you have it. 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. We're talking about victory and how to have, how to live a victorious uh, life through Christ Jesus. Amen, Sister Baker, I see you. Amen. Give me some, some thumbs up when you have it. Can y'all hear me? 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. Amen. All right, Minister Brown. Thank you so much. All right, Sister Baker. And it reads, thank you, Sister Phil. It reads, but thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Where did victory come from? Where is our victory coming from? I see you, Reverend Harris. Thank you. Yes, yes, Sister Coleman, amen. Our victory is coming through Jesus Christ. Not our neighbors, not our family members, not even ourselves. Our victory, in order for us to live a victorious life, is coming through Jesus Christ. I see your evangelist right, amen. Regardless of your status, your situation, or health, every born-again believer is capable of experiencing victory in their lives. If you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, 
you have victory in your life. When we talk about living a victorious life or having victory, this doesn't mean that we are not going to have any problems, any suffering, any persecution, trials, or tribulations in our life. That's not what victory means. We are, as long as we're on this earth, we have been told that we're going to suffer for Christ's sake. So, in, so just because we suffer, it doesn't stop or hinder our victory in our lives. It doesn't hinder us from having a victorious life. You can hinder yourself from having a victorious life, but the trials, the tribulations, the suffering, the sickness, all those things, all, all the persecution does not stop you from being victorious. It didn't stop Christ and it's not going to stop us. Amen. When we talk about living a victorious life or having victory, this doesn't mean that we are not going to have any problems. It just don't mean that. It don't mean that we're not going to have any problems. It doesn't mean that everything is going to be good all the time. Nor are things going to always work out according to our plans. Because we know that our ways are not his ways. Our thoughts are not his thoughts. We can set out to do something one way, but God plans for something to go another way. But what we need to understand on tonight and remember is that victory only comes through Jesus Christ. We don't have to fight for it. We don't have to buck, scream, or holler. It's through Jesus Christ. And if we have accepted Christ, we already have it. We already live in a, victory, a victorious life, no matter what it looked like. That's why he tells us we not moved by what we see. Faith is not by sight. We, we don't have to, we, because if we focus on what we're going through and, and how we feel and the, thing, the attacks that are coming at us, we'll think that we're, that we're not victorious. We'll think that we have failed. Turn with me to Romans 8 and 37. Romans 8 and 37. When you have it, say amen. Romans 8 and 37. Tonight we are talking about living in victory or having a victorious life. When you have it, say amen. Thank you, Minister Brown. And it reads, in all things, we are more than what? In all things, we are more than what? Through Christ Jesus. In all things, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. Through Christ Jesus that loves us, we are already conquerors. We are already victorious. That's right. We are, we are conquerors who loves us. Paul writes that in all these things, hardship, trouble, famine, exposure, health, threats, or violence, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loves us. This description of conqueror comes from the Greek, which carries the idea of extraordinary or remarkable. We are extraordinary conquerors, exceeding victory. We have extraordinary victory, which is unusual or remarkable victory, even though we don't always live as if we had it. We don't always live and act like we are conquerors. Even though we are. We don't always live it. We really do have extraordinary victory because of the life, the death, the burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That's the only way that we can be victorious. It's the only way. It ain't nothing that you can do on your own. But believe it. That's all you have to do is just believe that you have it. And just remember that the Bible says we're going to suffer for Christ's sake. 
So does that mean because we going through some stuff, because we get a bad report, does that mean that we are defeated? No, that's not what it means. That's just part of life. We're victorious. Yeah. You and I have the victory right now. I know you may be saying, but you have no idea what I have been going through this week. You have no idea what has been coming up against me. I am fighting on every side. Stop fighting. Because you already have the victory and I'm going to tell you tonight how to keep the victory. We are, we are already victorious. We already have the victory. Victory means overcoming or winning in a competition or struggle. Winning over an opponent or difficult problems. That's what, that's what victory means. Winning in a competition. Winning through struggles. Winning against the opponent. Winning in difficult problems. That's what it means. The Bible teaches us that we have already been given victory. Let's show you, let's let's see how we're winning. Turn to 1 John 5 and 4. And when you have that, say amen. So the first thing, while y'all looking for that, the first thing that I want y'all to write down and to remember is that we have the victory. Through Jesus Christ. We have the victory through Jesus Christ. And it is told to us through God's word in 1 Corinthians 15 and 57. I'll read it one more time. It says, thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. So we already have the victory. You need to tell yourself every morning when you get up, I'm victorious. I already have the victory because of what Christ has done on the cross. I know I may be going through some stuff right now. Things may be looking a little little sad and, and, and bad right now. But I'm still victorious. I still have the victory. The second thing that you need to remember is that because the Bible says that you are more than a conqueror. And we get that. Being more than a conqueror through who? All of this is through Jesus Christ. It's nothing that we have done for ourselves. It's all through Jesus Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. First John 5 and 4 says, For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. For whosoever is born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. Our victory is that we are born of God. We are children of God. We have accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And we believe that God, everything that God says about his son is true. And we have the victory. We are living a victorious life. All right. So, victorious, I keep saying it, let me give you the definition of it. A person has achieved victory, won the game or defeat, defeated the other side. Have anybody on the line tonight defeated the other side? Everybody, yes, everybody that has been born again, has defeated the other side. Have you accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior? If so, you won. You got the victory. You have defeated the other side. Let me tell you how you have defeated the other side. Second Corinthians 5 and 17 say, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Said, old things have passed away and behold, all things have come new. This means that you who are in Christ is now a new person with a new spiritual condition. The old man is our previous state that we were in and the new man is where we are now. We are victorious. 
you have defeated the other side. If you have accepted Christ in your life and you living for Jesus Christ and you giving God all the glory and all the praise, you win. You win no matter what comes your way. You're a winner. You're victorious. You're more than a conqueror. You win. That ought to be good news for somebody. Because we've been walking around with our heads hung down and feeling all down and out. And we think that uh, uh, when, when trouble come our way, we defeat it. We think that when we get a bad report, we defeat it. We think when people walk away from us, we defeat it. No, no, that doesn't mean that we defeat it. We winners, we victor through Jesus Christ. Jesus did it already. We're going to get into that. We winners. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. We're on the other side. We new creatures. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Y'all, are we still fighting off some stuff? Yes, yes, yes. Are we still trying to get this new man right? Yes, yes. As long as we're here on earth, yes, yes, most definitely, yes, yes. You have defeated the other side. Anyone who belongs to Christ is victorious. Write that down. I have defeated the other side. I am victorious. Keep telling yourself, I am victorious. No matter what, not just, just on this one thing. My whole life is victory. My whole life is victory. Victory won because I'm still here. And I'm able to testify of the goodness of God. I have, I, I'm victorious. I have the victory. No matter what comes, no matter what comes my way, I got the victory. Anyone that belongs to Christ is victorious. First John 4 and 4. Turn to first John 4 and 4. I'm giving these scriptures because these are your, your, your fighting scriptures for when you are standing, when you feel like you are standing alone and you feeling defeated, you go back to these scriptures, go back to them and, and tell I'm a new creature. Uh-uh, uh-uh. Through Jesus Christ, I have the victory. I can thank God for that. First John 4 and 4. Write it down. Write it down. 1 John 4 and 4 say, Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them because greater mm, 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 is he that is in you <laughs> than he that is in the world. It's all through Jesus Christ. All you have to do is be a child of God. Just keep, just keep serving God. Keep doing the right thing. Stop trying to fight on your own. He said that he has given us weapons for the pulling down of strongholds. Meaning you don't have to fight. He said, yeah, we walk in the flesh, but we don't war with the flesh. We don't have to fight with the flesh, with our mouth, with our hands, with our actions. We're already victorious. We're already victorious. If we could just, mm, if we could just learn sometimes to just, Remember that we're victorious and just walk away. Or just don't say nothing. Just, just live and be who God tells us to be. But no, no. Sometimes we think that we winning when we give our, give our peace of mind. We winning when we take action. Mm -mm. We already won. We already victorious. Ye are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Have overcome them. All the attacks, all the people, all the things, all the situations, all the tribulations. We have overcome them. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. You might still see the situation or the problem, it may even still be there. But we finna learn later on just how, just how to deal with that. 
It, it's coming. It's coming. But when it comes, you ought to be able to stand. When you have done, in Ephesians 6, he said, when you have done all you can to stand, you ought to be able to just stand in God. No matter what the situation, just, just stand. Again, victory in Christ does not mean that we are problem free, nor does it mean that we won't sin. Because Christ lives in us, we have the victory. But Romans 3 and 23 tells us, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So as long as we're in the flesh and we're living on this earth, we go, uh, sin is going to creep up on us. But we're not going to willfully sin. We're not going to just go out there and just, just go crazy. No, we're going to do everything in our power to trust and to serve God and to follow his commands and do his will. That's what we're going to do because we are children of God. And we got something greater living inside of us that will help us to live the life that God wants us to live through the Holy Spirit. He sent us the comforter so that we are capable of living and learning and serving and doing according to his will. He sent us some help. And because he sent us some help and because Jesus died for us, we victorious. We have, been, we have something that the world don't have. We may not always act like we got it. We may not always show the world that we have it. But we have something greater. Something good. Something awesome. Something powerful. That the world don't have. And now it's time for you and I to start utilizing what we have. It's time for us to start showing the world and the saints and the Christians. It's time for us to show the believers we're victorious. It's time for us to stop compromising with God's word. Trying to fix God's word up to fit us. Trying to change things around and set things up so that it'll work good for us. It's time for us to just live. A victorious life that Christ died on the cross for us to live. It's time for us to live that life. It's time for you to move out the way. For me to move out the way so that God can be glorified. And the only way that God can be glorified is something has to die. I know that sounds hard, but something has to die. In order for God to be glorified within you, you're going to have to die of yourself. You're going to have to get out the way. You're going to have to move. In order for other people to see the victory, you're going to have to move out the way and let God have his way. Even in your darkest times, even in your darkest moments, you still will have to move out the way. Drop that tear and then move. And say, God, have your way. Because my victory is in you. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And if we say, John, 1 John 1 and 8 says, And if we say that we have not sinned, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And I read this scripture to let us know that we can still be victorious. Victorious doesn't mean that you are living a sin-free life. That's not what it means. It's not what it means. Sin can still creep up on each and every one of us at any moment and at any time. Temptation comes. Persecution comes. Trials come. But if we say that we are invincible, we say that these things, we are above those things, we are deceiving ourselves. And we don't have to be deceived to have victory. We can know the truth and have victory. <laughs> yes, the truth will make you free. We can have the truth of God's word and have the victory. 
We will fall short every now and then, but victory is mine because Christ lives in me. Victory begins and ends with Jesus Christ. You don't have to, if there's nothing you can do, but be obedient to God's word and do it his way. Because it begins with Christ and it ends with Christ. Oh yeah, yeah. And just like salvation is free to all that believe, so is victory. You got to believe that you have victory in your life. You got to believe that you are victorious. I don't, I don't know where we miss the mark um, in the body of Christ, where we think that everything is based on a feeling or everything has to be has to be good on the up and up before we can think that we at a good place with God. Do you know that you can be in the darkest valley and be at a good place with God? Do you know that you can be at the end of your ropes but yet and still be at a good place with God? You can still have the victory, even though your physical eyes see nothing but darkness. You can still have the victory, even though your physical body feels defeat. Because it begins with Christ and victory ends with Christ. Christ has already defeated death, Satan, and the powers of darkness. Christ's death removed the wrath of God that was deserved and removed the sin that separated us from God. Christ's death took away the guilt of sin and placed it on himself. Christ has given us victory through his death on the cross. It's already done. Satan already know his place. He already defeated. God has already saved us from sin. We are living in eternal life. All those that have accepted Christ as their Lord and Savior, we are living uh, eternal life. We have been back in fellowship uh, and reconciled with God. We back in a relationship. All the things and sins that had separated us from God because of Christ on the cross, died on the cross for you and I. Now we're back connected with God. That's victory right there. Y'all not listening to me. You don't have to worry about defeating the enemy. He's already defeated victory. We don't have to worry about how can we get back with God. It's already done. Victory. That's victory. That's victory. He removed that wrath that we deserve, that punishment that we deserve. That's victory. We got it. We got it. And it came through Jesus Christ. Now, living a victorious life with Christ may surprise some of us tonight because it is our nature to always fight back. I told you that. To always defend ourselves. To always be on the defense. We just got to say something or do something to make us feel like we have won. That's all it is. is giving us gratification. Helping us to feel a certain way. Oh, I told him something. Oh, I gave her a piece of my mind. You didn't win. You, you was defeated right then. And when you opened up your mouth and you gave a piece of your mind, you was defeated. You already had the victory. You didn't win. When you felt like you needed to do something or say something, you was defeated. You didn't win. You didn't win. Victory. Let me tell you what victory is. Living a victorious life. It's peace and joy in the Lord. It's a life of constant fellowship with the Lord. And that fellowship is prayer. Con being connected to him with the Lord. A victorious life is giving God all the glory 
and all the praise, no matter what your situation may be. That's a victorious life. When you can have peace in the midst of your storm, you're victorious. Because when you got peace, you know that God already took care of it or he's taking care of it. You know that Jesus already did it for you. I got peace that this too shall pass. That's peace. When you have that, that joy, that unspeakable joy, full of glory, where you can praise God in the midst of your darkest hour, when you can praise God when trouble is coming on every side, when you can praise God when your back is up against the wall, when you can give God the glory, that's victory. Victory ain't about fighting. Ain't about telling people off. It ain't about uh, uh, trying to do whatever you need to do so that you can win. You already won. You a winner right now. You already winning. You got Jesus Christ on your side. You need to tell yourself, I'm winning. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm winning. That's when you are living a victorious life. If you up all night and you can't sleep worrying about something, you're not living victoriously. There's no peace in that. If you went and, and passed the hall, I don't know, these scriptures have been coming for the last two weeks. Why should we worry about what we should eat or what we should drink? When you worried about the material things in life, and not trusting that God is a supplier of all your needs. You're not living in victory. Your life is not victorious. But when you have that peace. That surpasses all understanding. Knowing that God will supply all your needs according to his riches and glory. Whether you see it or not. When you have peace. You're living in victory. You are victorious. Yes, a peace, a peace and joyful life in the Lord. A constant fellowship with the Lord. Talking with him. Fellowshipping with him. In his word. Living by his word. Trusting his word. Believing his word. Standing on his word. That's victory. That's victory. He said he will give you perfect Peace. Mm. Then just, just glorifying God in every situation. Knowing, knowing that you just got a, 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 a notice in the mail. But yet and still, you still giving God, I choose to glorify God. Because I'm victorious. Yeah, yeah. Matthew 5 and 9, you can write this down. Matthew 5 and 9, and I'll keep going because, you know, I can get carried away. Matthew 5 and 9 say, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Peacemakers are victorious. Blessed are the peacemakers, not those that are stirring up stuff and disrupting things. But the peacemakers, that not only do you want peace, but you want others to have peace. You victorious. Only a person that's walking in victory can help somebody else have victory. Only a person that have experienced peace can help somebody else and show somebody else some peace. Trouble likes trouble. Drama likes drama. But if we could just give hope and give peace and give joy the way that Christ has given it to us so that everybody can live a victorious life. So that we all can come in fellowship with one another and we all can be unified and come together and walk in the peace and the love of God and be victorious. It's only through Jesus Christ. It begins with him and it ends with him. When we are doing everything else besides being peacemakers, there's no victory in us. People don't see Christ in us. 
He say we bless. We are happy. Are the peacemakers. Romans 12 and 12 tells us rejoice in hope, patient in tribulations, continually, steadfastly in prayer. There goes that hope, there goes that joy, there goes that prayer, that fellowship right there. He said continually, steadfast in it. Don't stop praying when trouble comes. Don't stop fellowshipping when problems come your way. You're victorious. Stay in Stand, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For your labor is not in vain. We are victorious. We have victory through Jesus Christ. This verse reminds us to maintain a spirit of joy and hope despite our trials. Despite of what you're going through, keep a spirit of joy. Keep some hope going in your life. It's like we said on last Sunday. What your praise may help someone else. You may bring them out. Keep some hope and some joy. Maintain it, that spirit in your life. It encourages us to be patient in times of affliction and to remain faithful in prayer. And we will be victorious. Psalms 27 and 14 says, wait for the Lord. <laughs> we don't want to do that. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. The only way that we can wait is to stay in fellowship with the Lord. Stay in his word. Continuous in prayer to wait. On the Lord. When we're going through, wait on him. We're victorious. Just wait on him. This encourages us to wait patiently for the Lord for not and not take matters mm, into our own hands. See, when we get anxious, we start taking things upon ourselves. And let me tell you something. If you can do it, then you wouldn't trust in God. Wait on him. But drawing strength and courage from him during challenging times, it reminds us the, of the importance of trusting God and trusting God's timing. We must wait on God. We must keep peace. Write that down. We got must keep peace in our life. We must have joy in the Lord. We got to Trust the Lord and stay in fellowship with him through prayer and through his word. Stay in fellowship with him. Because that's the only way that we won't be defeated. You can have victory and still walk in defeat. When you choose to compromise God's word, when you choose to take on things of yourself, put them in your hands and do them your way. You leave the victory and start walking into defeat. Now you defeat it. And when you start going down that hole of defeat, it's hard to turn around and come back into victory. Because then you have yielded yourself to temptation and you have yielded yourself to the enemy and now he's having a party with you. And what's really sad is that Jesus died so that we could have victory. So that we could really live this victorious life. But when we choose to take matters in our own hands. And when we start compromising God's word. Okay, I'm going to do a little of this and some of this. And no, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do it this way. When we start doing that. Are we really telling God that we trust him? Are we really saying when we take it up on ourselves and God, God has already given us a, his son to do it. Are we telling God that he didn't have to, Jesus didn't have to die for us? Are we saying that what Jesus did is in vain? I can do it myself. 
You might not realize that's what you're saying. You may never looked at it that way. But just think about it for a minute. That you already have the victory. You already got it. You're a winner. More than a conqueror. All things are working together for the good of them that love God. He said that he would never leave you nor forsake you. He promised you that you would be blessed. He promised you that he would be with you always, even until the end of the earth, the end of ages. He said that he would make provisions for you. He would guide you. He would teach you if you just trust him. He said he would just acknowledge him and he would direct your path. But yet and still, you decide to do it your way. What are you telling him? Now that you have decided, you don't want that. I want to do it my way. I can fight better than God. My words mean it's stronger and tougher than, than how God would do it. I can handle it. Now you're in defeat. You done left a victorious life. You done left the covering that God had for you where he said he going to supply all your needs. Where he had placed all the promises over you and you stepped out of the covering. And now you walk in their defeat. Everybody else still going on in victory. Now you mad at them because they praising God. They exalting God. They glorifying God. They giving them the honor. They giving them the glory. You can see changes in their life. They happy. You can see victory. You can see their life changing. Their prayers changing. The word is changing in them. But you walking in defeat because you chose to leave the covering that God had for you. You're already victorious. Stay with God. No matter what it look like. Stay with God. Psalms 118, 15, verse 15 says, Shout for joy. And victory resounds the tents of the righteous. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand is done, has done mighty things. No matter what you feel like you're going through, God has st still been greater than what we're going through. And we ought to be giving him all the joy, all the, they say shout for joy. We ought to be letting the world know because I'm living a victorious life. And I can go to bed and don't have to worry about what I should eat or what I should drink. That I can get up in the morning when the Lord wake me up and say, this is the day that the Lord has made. I shall rejoice and be glad in it. That I can get up and rejoice because all my burdens and all my cares, I can give it to him and he'll take care of it so that I can stay victorious. That's all God is saying. We victorious. This gives God the glory for all he has done in letting others know that it is the right hand of God that gives us the victory and we will shout about it. This one, y'all know this is my favorite scripture besides uh, I can do all things through Christ Jesus which strengthens me, which I probably should have put that on. <clears throat> Because that's victory too. I can do all things through Christ. In whatever situation I'm in, I can make it. I can be okay. I can do what I need to do through Christ Jesus who strengthens me. But Philippians 4, 6 through 7. Because I'm living a victorious life, God tells me to be anxious for nothing. But in everything by prayer, making my request known to him not that he don't already know what it is but making my request known to him with thanksgiving in the midst of whatever i'm going through because i'm victorious i can still give thanks i can still give him praise i can still glorify him with thanksgiving 
I'm making my request known to him. And he said that the peace that surpasses all, oh glory, hallelujah, surpasses all understanding will guard our hearts and will guard our minds. Y'all know, <clears throat> every starting in, 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 well, starting from the beginning, but every battle in the Bible, every battle in the Bible, every, when Moses went to battle, Joshua went to battle, I mean, it, the list just goes on. When David was in battle, every battle, there was something that they did. They sought the Lord. And every one of those battles that was fought in the Old Testament, you will read that God fought their battle or God gave them the victory. It never says anything about they did it on their own. God gave them victory when he parted the Red Sea, the Jordan. I mean, there is just victory after victory after victory. David and Goliath, there is victory. He was, he, was, he was in the spirit and instructed by the Holy Spirit how to fight that back. Even though man had gave him the tools the armor to put on the fight with, he still did it God's way. To keep your victory, to live in victory, you still got to do it God's way. You still got to seek God. How do I fight this battle? How do I do this? How do I uh, take care of that? That's acknowledging him in all your way. You showing God that you trust him. And that you want to stay living in the victory that Christ have made, have made available for you and I. So you want to consult God on what to do and how to do it. And not take it up on yourself to take actions and walk in, walk in defeat. Our victory is through grace. Grace is something God does for us. Grace is, has often been defined as God's unmerited favor. And it is. And it is. But grace is much more than that. Grace is God's mighty power. Working for us. Doing things for us that we couldn't do for ourselves. <laughs> Salvation is grace. And because we accepted salvation, we have victory. Ephesians 2 and 8 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is a gift of God. Victory is a gift of God. Because victory and salvation are connected to Jesus Christ. And it all comes from the same source. No matter how defeated you may feel, no matter how dark your situation may be, and whatever may come up in your life later on in life, that does not mean that you are not victorious. That does not mean that you don't have the victory. The victory has already been promised to you and I. And all we have to do is walk in that victory. And do the things, walk in obedience, keep that peace, give God the praise, serve him, glorify him, fellowship with him so that we can keep that victory. Victory is mine, said the Lord. Victory is mine. 2 Corinthians 12 and 8 says, but he said to me, my grace is for sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. When you are at your weakest point, God's grace is sufficient for you. It's enough. It will give you the power that you need to endure whatever it is that you may be going through. Whatever it is. Therefore, I will boast all 
the more gladly about my weakness. See, I can boast about my weakness. That's what the scripture is saying. Because it's through God's grace that we have been strengthened. It's not nothing we have done of ourselves. It's all through the blood of Jesus Christ. And the death of him on the cross and him and his resurrection, him raising up, giving us the power and the victory that we can stand before any challenge that comes our way. No matter how hard it hit, no matter how strong it is, I got the victory through Christ Jesus. <laughs> yes. And 1 Thessalonians 4 and 17 tells me the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then which are alive and remain shall be caught up. Victory is in Christ. And you shall be caught up with them in the clouds. To meet the Lord in the air. Oh, victory is yours. Yeah. No matter, no matter what the situation is. Stop walking around with your head down. Stop walking around looking sad and defeated. Let the world know your testimony. That God has brought you through and he's still bringing you through some stuff. But even in the midst of what he brought me through and what he bringing me through, I already had the victory. When I accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, and I started living the life for him, he turned it around for me. Instead of me walking in defeat, he gave me victory. You need to tell somebody that my life is victorious. I am a winner, and today I win. Through Jesus Christ, I win. And I have eternal life. And there's going to come a day, hallelujah, when I'm going to see those streets that are paved with gold. And he said that he's going to wipe all my tears from my eyes. There will be no more weeping and there will be no more crying. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. There will be healing in the land. Oh, yes, God. Yes, God. I will be there. I'm going to live a victorious life here on earth. And I'm going to live a victorious life in heaven. And I encourage you to trust God. Keep the peace of God in your life. Continue to give him the praise and the glory in spite of what you're going through. In spite of what people say about you or what people think about you. Keep studying your word to show yourself approved unto God. A workman that needed not to be ashamed. But be able to rightly divide the word of truth so that you can help somebody else. Love as God has told us to love one another. Keep that victory in your life. Walk away from defeated folks. Walk away from people that are pulling you away from God and having you to walk in defeat. Walk away. Turn and go in the direction of Christ. Because you are victorious. You are a winner. Through Jesus Christ, you win. Amen. Praise the Lord. I thank God for each of y'all. I thank y'all for listening. I pray that y'all was blessed on tonight. Amen. Just remember, just remember, because of Christ, because of what he done on the cross for you and I, we are victorious. I don't care what you feel. I don't care what it looked like. I don't care what they say. I don't care what the doctor's report is. I don't care how much money I got in my pocket, how much money I got in the bank. I don't care. I am victorious. I have the victory. Oh, gracious God, we come before you tonight, Lord. We say thank you for the victory, Lord God. 
Thank you, Lord God, for loving us enough, Lord God, to keep us covered and protected by you, Father God. We thank you, O oh gracious God. Hide your word in our hearts that we may not sin against thee, God. God, let us walk and live a victorious life. Let us continue to fellowship with you, Lord God. Let us continue to love you, God. Let us continue to, to have peace in our life, that peace that surpasses all understanding, God. God, let us do it your way and not our way. We surrender tonight, God, over to you, Lord, so that we can walk in the victory. Lord God, we promise, God, that we will give you the praise and the glory. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen and amen. Bye-bye. God bless y'all. I love y'all. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Be safe out there in this rain, please. Bye-bye.